Hey, what's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my personal thoughts and opinions on this new project from Jid called DiCaprio 2. Now Jid is a rapper from Atlanta who signed to Dreamville, and he made a ton of noise with his last project called The Never Story. When that came out, everybody was hailing him as one of the best young artists out, and based off the skill that he has when it comes to just the technical side of things, I'm talking about his rhyme schemes and his flows, I could understand why people loved him so much. He really does rip shit on that album as well as this album, but I still felt like there were a couple of things he could have improved upon to be even better. If you want to know more about that, you can go back and look at that old review. But we are going to jump into this one, and I want to start off with the positives, because there were a lot of things here that I did like, including the song Slick Talk, where Jid's flow Flows and rhyme schemes are as just impressive as ever. He really snapped all over this song. And I like the heavy drums and spooky feeling that you get with this beat. I definitely think this is one of the best beats on the project, because as I go through this, I will talk about some of the others, and I think the production is one thing that probably could have been a step up. That's just my opinion, and we will get into that later. He also has some nice lines on this song, like when he spits, I'm from East Atlanta like Gucci and Travis Porter, but my story is similar to the hare and the tortoise, just a testament to how hard he's been working, and this is actually a topic that comes up consistently throughout this project. It's not really anything new, I wouldn't say his approaches are anything too insane or crazy as far as the storytelling goes, but he does go into how he came up in the rap game, coming out of the hood, and just trying to make it, so I do appreciate that, and that's something we get from a lot of rappers. You're going to get more of this on the song Working Out. This one is very smooth and velvety with sprinkled piano keys and a groovy bass line, so I did kind of like the beat. And what he's getting at on here is just how he's been working so hard and things aren't really working out. This is a theme that comes up, as I just said. So, you know, I don't have too much to say about this track. I did like the beat, but it's not anything that I felt was great, and it's not really anything I would come back to. I also didn't think the hook was that strong. The way that he works that sing-songy style isn't really captivating or anything like that. So I think the hooks throughout this project are kind of hit and miss too. And I know I'm going to be in the minority when it comes to this album. I see a lot of high ratings already and people are talking about it as album of the year. But hey man, I'm just giving you my opinion. I ain't telling you how to feel. I ain't saying it's bad. This is just what it is. But if I'm going to talk about what I'm most impressed with Jid, it is when he's actually going deeper and he seems a bit more focused in some moments. For example, Off to Zoinkies I think is one of the strongest tracks conceptually as it deals with getting off of drugs and just not doing them in the first place. You're also getting a very cool beat here because you might recognize a sample from Three Kings, that Jay-Z, Rick Ross, and Dr. Dre song that was absolute fire. I think this is another one of the standout cuts and again, just sticking to that concept made it stand out. And one of the other standouts has got to be 151 Rum. Not just because of that nasty, twisting bass line. I think that bass is hard as fuck and it's just going to give you a back massage if you turn that shit up in your car. But he does get a bit more personal and into his own life on here. Like when he spits, taking cheese from the government, cereal boxes with the bugs in it, hand me down, this my brother shit. Here he's just speaking on his rough upbringing and how he came up. And then he spits, standing next to Lil Tay when that bullet hit him, shit I miss him. I wish that bullet missed him but didn't and since I've been living with it like a sickness. This is just one of the most raw and brutal moments from Jid on this whole project in my opinion and I just wish he could take some of these ideas and really expand on them and just flesh these ideas out. As far as rapping, like I said it already but I'm going to say it again, his technical skill is fucking supreme. I love his vocal style as well. He has a bit of a nasally tinge to his voice that makes him stand out. He raps his ass off, great flow rhyme schemes and delivery but I just feel like sometimes he takes the long way to say very little I think the storytelling could be better as well and if you do actually read the lyrics pages for some of these songs like really there's not a whole lot being said just in some instances and I'm not saying every single song has to get political and be deep and personal and all that not everybody does that but Jid was talking about in an interview how they wanted to compete with TDE and I think that's one of the things that Dreamville needs to do I kind of feel the same way with Boz obviously he's not as technically a sound rapper as Jid at all he more, you know, he makes more of the smooth vibe, so I do like some of his music, but it's the same thing where the content and storytelling isn't really there. And for me personally, that's something that really matters to me. Not to everybody, I can understand people rating this album very high just off the strength of the performance, because he is snapping, not taking that from him at all. But again, just my opinion and me personally, I think if he had some more storytelling, uh, went more in depth on some of the shit that he's talking about, it would be way better. Because sometimes you're reading the bars and you're like, what the hell is he getting at? I'm just saying. Everybody out here is saying that Jid is already a top five lyricist. I've seen this discussion already. Is he one of the goats already? Like, can we please just settle the fuck down, all right? There are plenty of lyricists out there who I think are better. It doesn't take away from him and make him bad. But as far as actually saying shit, building on concepts and storytelling and these ideas... I just think he has a long way to go, but 
we are going to move forward. You know, I do feel like once in a while he also has some goofy bars, like on Strawberries, where he raps about a woman who's had so many abortions, her pussy is a haunted house. And then this feminist female rapper he calls Feminem. Like, these aren't really great lines. But you know what? Not everybody has great lines all the way through. I get it. I'm just giving you a couple examples here. But I will say that this track is saved from being a least favorite because I did like the string production. And BJ the Chicago Kid shows up and just kills it, man. BJ the Chicago Kid, he just rarely disappoints, especially when you see him featured on his hooks. I think he's a great feature, so that was dope. Uh, but one of the tracks that cannot be saved from being a least favorite to me is Mounted Up. Again, the flows and performance, like, you can't take away from Jid. He's snapping on this shit. But this beat is fucking awful. It just sounds like something that was made on a $3 Casio keyboard. Really cheap sounding. The hook, again, is very weak. I just think the hooks throughout this could use a lot of work. You know, some of them are alright. Like, I just brought up Scrawberries. I thought BJ the Chicago Kid killed that. Uh, and then we get the song Tide. This one I've seen so many people freaking out over. You're featuring uh, Black on here as well as LMA, so you're getting like a lovey-dovey R&B relationship sort of thing. But to me it all kind of felt sort of clunky. You get Jid spitting some OVO sweatshop bars. How you gonna dump me and then leave with my hoodie? And you ain't coming back giving me back my hoodie. And then Black isn't much better when he says, How you let it drag on Spyro. You also got Ella May, as I mentioned, but her feature didn't really do much other than bring the female perspective. And I don't know why they had that outro on there that says, Niggas not shit but a tongue and a dick. <sighs> I don't know why you would put that on your project, but hey, I guess, you know, it kind of ties in the song, I guess. But still, that just felt like a weird choice to me. But hey, go ahead. Do your thing, Jid. We also get Off D's featuring J. Cole, since we are talking about features. This one, to me, I didn't really love the production. It's a twangy banger. It's all right. Nothing that I would really bump with. You are getting some more rapid flows and sing-songy styles that are pretty fun, as well as J. Cole referencing Duck Hunt, so the old head in me did appreciate that. And the song Westbrook really let me down. The beat is all right. It's just kind of a standard banger. ASAP Ferg is featured, but all he does is a hook when he really should have been given a verse because I think an ASAP Ferg verse would have been much better than that first verse from Jid where he has this deep vocal effect on his voice. That did nothing for me at all. I just thought it sounded kind of silly. And then there's another verse from Jid where he's just coming in with these cat, gat, rat, and hat bars. Again, he's showing you some technical skills and rhyme schemes, but if you actually read the lyrics, it's like... There's not much to be said. I know not every track has to have a lot to be said, but it does help when there's some really clever lines and shit that stick out. And I didn't get too much from this project. I'm not saying it's not there. You're definitely going to get some lines. I'm just stressing that because I know in the comments section people are going to say, you're crazy for what you rated this man. He's one of the best rappers. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not taking away from his rapping. I just think as far as structuring great memorable songs that I'm going to remember and come back to, and I say, that's a Jid track. That doesn't sound like anything else. Ooh, this hook is great. Da 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 da. I'm not getting a whole lot of that on this project, and I still think that's where he needs to improve. We even get a song with Method Man and Joey Badass called Hotbox, and this one was pretty cool. I mean, it didn't hit me as hard as I was hoping. It's just a dusty boom bap banger where they're going in with some weed bars. Method Man does have a pretty solid verse, but the opening is kind of weird. He's talking about having a wedgie up his ass or something like that. It is what it is. Joey Badass's part seemed like it came and went pretty fast. Solid track, not amazing. And with this album, I was close to a 3.5 out of 5, man. I thought about it, but this ain't it for me, man. I know I'm in the minority here. I'm not in love with the whole Jid thing yet. I'm going to go with a 3 out of 5 because I do think it's really good, but I already touched on some of the things that I think you can improve upon. Wasn't blown away with a lot of the hooks here. The concepts and song structures didn't reach me too much. I think as far as the production, there are a couple of great beats I really like, but then there's a bunch of stuff that's hit and miss. Even on the tail end, there were a couple of tracks that just didn't really give me any talking points or, you know, I didn't have much to say but it is what it is if they are going to compete with tde right there that's where i think dreamville needs to improve man just these stronger concepts and ideas and themes because you got some guys over on tde who are coming through with some great shit they're also making some better bangers in my opinion i think especially if you look at what j-rock did on his last album but hey it is what it is man this is pretty good but i basically feel the same way about this album as i did the never story if you love the Never Story, you're absolutely going to love this. If you're a Jid fan, I don't see you being disappointed. But to me, it's pretty cool for what it is. I ain't going to come back to it. I don't think there's any song here I would go out of my way to come back to. But I did enjoy the listen. I'm just not getting much replay value. Or, you know, I didn't get any of those moments where, like, I'm scowling off of the production. That kind of let me down. Hey, man, some of the flows made me scowl, though. So there you go. It is what it is. But that's just what I got to say about this one. You guys check it out for yourself. And then hit me up in the comments section with your thoughts and opinions. And of course, make sure you show me love and you show me lots of it. I always need that. By the way, we do have that new podcast episode up, the 20K subscriber special where I answered all kinds of questions. 
And you can also find the podcast now on Spotify and iTunes. So make sure you check it out. You know, give me some streams, follows, ratings, all that good shit that will help bump the podcast up a little bit. I have some more guests lined up, so that shit is going to be really fun. Mike's going to come back. We're going to do another horror episode. That's going to be great as well. Lots of stuff are in the works. Reviews are still coming. I also just like to do the podcast because it's really fun. So if you guys like what I'm doing, support it, share it. You know how it goes. But thank you for watching this video right here, like I always say. And I will see you next time.